And thank you very much for joining us here on PM Express. Tonight we are live also on Joy 99.7 FM. Because of the weightier matters at stake, we've decided to bring in um, individuals who know their staff, but also try and um, break the issues down from, from all the angles that there is, also, of course. And that is why tonight I'm inviting you to join us as we begin to uh, understand the issues that have been unfolding in a Volta region over the last uh, few days. And I want to quickly go to what we're going to do tonight. We're going to be learning from history tonight, but also with a bit of reality also, because of all that has unfolded in the last few days, we, 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 if you don't understand history, you cannot, I guess, address uh, the questions here. But again, into the question about what substantive, long-lasting solutions can be found to this Western Togoland uh, crisis which is unfolding in the Volta region. That's what we're going to be looking at today. Where are we tonight? We know that the uh, Western Togoland secessionists are refusing uh, to hand in their boots. Fresh videos have emerged of attack on the uh, state transport uh, uh, company's terminal in Ho. By the way, if you look at the history, they believe that Ho is, so the Ho district is part of the uh, Western Togoland uh, area that they are claiming. They've attacked the, uh, the, the bus terminal there, bent one of the, uh, of the STC vehicles. Um, the police and the um, fire service have to intervene to avert uh, you know, further bloodshed in that particular part of the Volta region. So that's where we are tonight with the developments. This is from the back, on the back of what happened um, on Friday. Now, do we, do we know also tonight that that's ugly state. They've held a press conference and are spoken and they announced this preparedness to deploy what they call their warriors uh, in collaboration with the security agencies to help the security agencies in, in protecting um, their, their territory. I mean, why? We'll get into that. There is a sense that they, they do not have confidence in the uh, national security, the police apparatus to protect them. And that's why this has become uh, a big deal for them. They've condemned, by the way, and this has to be emphasized. They, they have condemned, and this also includes the the Volta Regional House of Chiefs also condemning the secessionist acts that we've seen since Friday. I mean, so there is, there is, there's unity, I guess. There's unity in, in a collective condemnation of the actions of the secessionists that we've seen since Friday. Nobody entertains what has happened and there's been widespread all around condemnation. The NDC has condemned it. The NPP has condemned it, and we've seen all across a condemnation for it. What is splitting, splitting heads is the question of what do we do to fix the problem and guarantee the, the safety and security of the people in the Volta region? That is a fundamental question of this agreement, um, which is, which is uh, one that we're going to be discussing tonight. How do you find a lasting solution to this problem, which is the focus of tonight's uh, conversation. We'll get into that shortly. Well, we know that on Monday, uh, some 31 people were arrested. We, yesterday, we went into that in quite detail uh, with their lawyers and a host of other brilliant submissions. If you missed that show yesterday, please get a copy. Uh, go onto, the, on, onto our YouTube channel. Uh, just search for PM Express and great insights. You'll learn a few things about um, from the perspectives of, uh, of conference resolution, um, peace and security, uh, also the, the legal question also. Now, what are the facts? And this is where it gets even more complicated. We know that the Western Togoland area is divided into five, five, the five regions. And then yesterday I showed you a map of the Western Togoland area, straddles all the way from the north all the way down. And you see them here, the Volta, OT, Northern region, Northeast region, and the Upper East region. To draw that map, um, which I showed you yesterday on the PM Express, you see all the way, the vertical, um, you know, straddling, uh, all the way bordering Burkina Faso's border all the way down. These are the key areas that they, they are claiming, um, which, of course, have now been merging to what we now know as, as Ghana. Now, what do we also know in, in terms of that? This is the map I'm talking about. You see the map there, the blue area, is the Western Togoland. That is the area. So, you see, so the point I'm making to you is that for those who believe in the course of Western Togoland, they see the division of, of Ghana into these areas and they find their territories in Avolta, in Oti, 
northern region, northeast region, and upper east region. So the blue area all the way from the north down is what they are claiming. I'm going to be talking about some of the specific areas. In terms of the specific areas they are claiming, it includes areas like the whole district, Pando, uh, district as well, Boem, Gonja, Mampusi, all the way up north. It's, it's uh, the, the areas that they are claiming as, as part of the, of the western, western Togoland. We're going to get into a bit of a history and see if we can learn from that history to find permanent solutions uh, that government says maybe considering going forward. Now, the western Togoland has been a member of the, and this is another controversial point, of the Unrepresented Nations and Peoples Organization, the UN Appeal, since 2017. And this is a very highly organized international organization, and they appear to be funding and sponsoring the activities of the secessionists, right? I mean, if you go onto their website, it appears to be a very organized organization, and they source funding from across the globe to fund their members. And they've been part of this group. But, 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 what, but, what, but what really... Um, is, the, is the antecedents. What really has been a historical explanation for why we're here and why the people may be, may be pushing for this. We'll get a bit into that when we, when we speak to the um, individuals who will join me shortly on the show. Germany established the, the Togoland Protectorate in 1884. This is way back, but there's something that happened, um, which is the, the World War, that began to change the dynamics in terms of the geography now, after the First World War in 1914, Britain and France invaded the protectorate. What happened? Then they, it was a split. Um, after Germans' defeat, of course we know that, the signing of the Treaty of, the, of, of Vassilis, the western part of the Togoland then became the British Mandate, the British Togoland, which is the, what we, you know, most of those people who believe in the cause call it, the British Togoland. The French, by the way, took what now is Togo. And so it was shared between France and Britain. British took its side of the western part of the western Togoland, which then became part of Ghana after the plebiscite. But let's go into that. Let's, let's break down even further. Now, after the Second World War, British Togoland became a United Nations trust territory. And the trust question is important. That was under British administration for a while. Now, something then begins to change. In 1957, when Ghana became independent, slightly before that, there was a plebiscite. Okay, and then, you know, the plebiscite decided, in essence, that part, what, what we now call Ghana, that Western Togoland should now be part of Ghana. This plebiscite question is a very controversial one. The outcome, many believe, was rigged. I mean, but also the, which places voted for it and which places did not vote for it in itself is a subject of heated controversy till today. There have been several petitions on this over the years to the UN to try and resolve this and, and et cetera. But of course, that's, that's how, that's why we are, we, that's, that's a history, that's a generation uh, question of people, old men and women who've, who've seen this over the years and want to return to what it used to be. The argument is that if Togo which France then held, became independent by themselves, why don't you give the Western part also and make it independent? That's a fundamental argument they've been making. Now on May 9th, 2017, a first attempt was made by this uh, group that calls itself the, uh, the Homeland Study Group Foundation, made a first attempt to declare independence. Okay, after many, many years of making the noise and writing petitions and trying to bring attention to the fact that they believe they should be a standalone independent territory by themselves. They made an attempt. A few people were arrested. Numbering about 80 people were arrested. The charges were eventually dropped. We don't know exactly why that was the case, by the way. And so that is, um, in essence, the, the history. We've seen that from 2017 to date, the Friday's happenings, and the eruption in violence appears to be the most significant, most serious of the attempts by the groups in question to make a point and be heard. The Ghana Police Service arrested, you know, 80, uh, eight leaders of the group. We know that for now, and most of them, they were let go in eventually. So it's a, it's a very dicey question. What does the history of the Western Togoland area mean to the recent developments? And how can we look to that? 
as a basis to try and address the question. Um, I'm delighted tonight to be joined by a member of the Council of State, renowned, excellent brain of this republic, who, of course, is um, is uh, is is comes from the the, the, the land in in Volta region. Uh, Sam Okujito will join me tonight. We'll also be speaking to the vice president of the uh, Volta, uh, Mr. Okujito. Thank you very much for joining us here on PMX. I'm grateful that you could make time to talk to us. Thank you very much. We'll also be speaking to the Vice President of the Volta Regional House of Chiefs, um, uh, Togbe Tefle Hodo, who is also joining us uh, tonight on PM Express. And then, of course, we have the former um, Member of Parliament uh, also joining me. Uh, Mr. Koshikedem has written quite extensively about this. He has some very strong controversial views on this. We'll tap into that um, also tonight on PM Express. Later, we'll get to talk to the Information Minister as well. Um, as we begin to find a lasting solution to this. You want to stay with me. We are live on Joy 99.7 FM and, of course, on the Joy News Channel here on Multi TV. Thank you very much for um, joining us and staying with us here on PM Express. My uh, guests joining me uh, tonight for the conversation, which, by the way, is also live on the uh, Joy 99.7 FM, is Sam Okujito, is a prominent Ghanaian lawyer. He is a member of the Council of State, and I'm delighted that he could join us. Um, he is a true son of the soil when it comes to the Volta region, and so I'm delighted to tap into his expertise uh, and, on this particular subject. Also joining me is another son of the land, uh, Mr. Kosi Kedem. He is a former MP for Ohohoi South constituency. He's written quite a lot on this particular subject. Some of his views are controversial. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. Um, but we need to understand the history, is my position on this matter, um, and interrogate it quite closely uh, as, we, as we begin to find some lasting solutions, see if we can draw from that history uh, in, in trying to fix the problem that is currently uh, you know, militating against the peace of the place in the Volta region. Also joining me tonight is uh, Togbe Tepre Hodo, who is the Vice President of the Volta Region House of Chief. They issued a very strongly worded statement today um, asking for an independent investigation into the um, riots and violence, uh, the revolt that we saw on Friday. They have some questions that they've asked um, in their statement today that, uh, of course, he's getting to join me. They're asking for more presence and security on the ground because of the sense they get that they are not adequately protected and didn't see how the violence could have erupted if there's enough for protection there. Later on, we'll get to talk to Kojo Ponkrumah just to get a sense of how the government's machinery is handling this particular problem. Um, he will join us later uh, here on PM Express. We are live on Joy 99.7 FM as well and on the Joy News Channel. I want to start with you, uh, Mr. Okujito. I mean, I, I said at the beginning that you are a true son of the land. So when you heard what happened on Friday, and then this morning, another incident at the whole um, STC terminal, a bus was set ablaze. Um, what was your reaction? Well, the truth of the matter is that I think that's just criminal conduct by some people. And over the years, I've noticed that Ghanaians have become what they call copycats. <laughs> that means they see something happening somewhere, they think it's just natural for them also to behave the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, you see what is going on in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. When Western Cameroon also have the same problem where they are trying to see it out. Mm -hmm. But of course, those from those in Ghana are do not understand the history behind the other one. And they try to confuse them as if they are the same. Cameroon was also a German colony. But what happened was that the same part was French, the other one was English. The western part was English. It was being governed by the governor from Nigeria. The same as we have plebiscite, they also had a plebiscite. Mm -hmm. In their plebiscite, they decided that the two Cameroons should be governed together. 
Now that is why they joined the French speaking part. Only to realize that that was an error. <laughs> well, at least that is what it seems. And so they are like relegated. And so now they are trying to fight for so called independence. Now, the Ghana one is completely different in the sense that the plebiscite that was held in the Gold Coast for the so-called Western Togoland, it had nothing to do with the French Togoland. Because French Togoland at that time was a colony and France had no intention of relinquishing its control over it. But, but the Western Togoland was governed with the Gold Coast as one unit. Indeed, one can go further to say that Ghana was divided into the colony proper, Asante, and then the northern territories in the north. But then the truth of the matter is that a lot of people in the so-called British Togoland, or British mandated Togoland, mm. were having their own counter origins in the Gold Coast. The impression being given by some massive, uh, uh, what's his name, Togo, Togoland was uh, every, it's, it's, it's part of the fallacy, which is actually affecting people's way of thinking. And it has been going on for years. Because at the time of independence, at the time of independence, Togoland was called Transvolta Division. It was not Togoland. It was, the name was changed to Transvolta Togoland. But you find out that there are Gondas, mm. there are Nampusis, there are so many other ethnic groups north of Ho and Pandu, mm. who are not Evis. Okay. They are not Evis. And I have noticed over the years, so when they talk about the same uh, uh, number nine, and then people cling as if they are making reference to the Evis. And I try to remind people that the so-called number nine was not anybody's decision to call the region number nine. At the time of independence, there was a beauty contest that was held. And the people had picked numbers. And the winner happened to come from Pando. Mm. And her number was nine. Okay. And so when they talk about number nine, they are only making reference to that lady and saying that that is where she comes from. That is the number nine people. Oh. But she was from Pando. Mm -hmm. So this confusion had been going on over the years. There was only a small group that was were in this, which is the Pando and the Ho. The rest of the Elvis were in the Gold Coast. They were not part of Togoland at all. Mm. You can take Anglo Mafi. Indeed, the funny part of all is that the place that they went to go and cause the havoc the other time, which is Maple and Bato, had never been in Togoland. No. So these are proper Gold Coast, Gold Coast I mean, now Ghana that territory. Was Gold Coast. Yeah. That was proper Gold Coast. Yeah. And I have authority to speak about it because many people do not realize that I was a member of parliament for representing that area. Okay. And now my own nephew is the MP for that area. That is uh, Okujetua Blakwa. Blakwa, that's my nephew. It's my younger brother's son. Yeah. So this confusion has been going on all the time. So as soon as you mention Eve, it's as if, you know, we the Eves, we are this. And I said, no, even in Togo itself, the Eves are only in the south. Mm. All the northern portion of Togo, has they are not Eves. And the majority of the people from the Volta region are not Evis. 
And so those who are not talking about the succession, now we have rulers who are the chiefs. Now, how many times have you heard any of the chiefs talking about succession? In fact, they condemn it outrightly today. The National <laughs> House of Chiefs, I Richmond. Can't believe I mean, no, I know, I know all the paramount chiefs in the Bota region. I know all of them. They are all educated people. They are all straightforward individuals who are interested in the development of the region for the benefit of the people. And they can even look at the developments in Ghana as opposed to in Togo. Mm. And as a service, no, no right-minded person would like to live and go over there. The reputation that we have in Ghana, it doesn't exist anywhere else mm. on the continent of Africa. In fact, one of my stunning jokes, the time the plebiscite was held, I was actually a student in England. I see. I was in England when Ghana became independent. I was not here. In March 1957, I was a student in Leeds in England. And at the time of independence, there was such high respect for people of Ghana. To such an extent that there was even a joke I used to tell my people that my colleagues from Nigeria, when they asked them, they say, oh, are you also from Ghana? No, they asked, where do you come from? They say Nigeria. Then they will turn back and say, oh, is that, also, is that in Ghana? Mm -hmm. And some of them will say yes. Mr. Mr. Black, so I mean, sorry, Mr. Kujito. I am not a black Forgive me. Um, so, uh, so great, great historical lesson, and that begins to get you to appreciate the current events, Mr. Kosikeda. Let me bring you in here. I mean, you've written um, a pamphlet of a sort, right? D draw for me. We, we just had the the, the history. Okay, and where these areas were that were part of the, uh, you know, the uh, British Togoland, mm -hmm. which now has become the subject of the of the struggle for, for the people there. Um, link it to what has happened on Friday and today, right? Mm -hmm. Is there any justification for the attacks that we've seen? Clearly, there's wide, widespread condemnation. There is, everybody will say, no basis for violence. And I've seen... Um, Sam could do to explain. Even the places that were attacked were not part of the mm. territories that they were claiming. Mm. So, so what is it that the individuals who are claiming to be pushing this seek to be representing? Okay, before I go on, I just want to make one little point. Sure. About the beauty queen from uh, 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 Togoland. Who picked the number nine? Yeah. Actually, she was from Alavanyo, okay. not Pandu. Yes, Alavanyo, that's correct. That is correct. Yeah, yes, Alavanyo, not Pandu. Alavanyo. She was called Monica Fiakuru or something like that. Monica, but, that's correct. The, the second point, I want, but, but let me say that uh, Mr. Kujo too is one of my idols. Uh, I'm one of his secret admirers. And uh, I remember very well when he was in parliament, the way he performed really inspired me. Yeah. So I was hoping that I would meet him here today. So I'm so disappointed. That he's, 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 he's doing my virtual yeah. connection. Uh, yeah. All men don't go out in the night. <laughs> yeah. So uh, definitely, as you have said, what is happening now needs to be totally condemned. And I join those people who are condemning it. Because this is not necessary. You see? Mm -hmm. Now, what is even more funny is that they are attacking places which are not part of the so called Western Togoland. Mefe, Japan, Akusi. What are they doing there? Totally out of place. So I agree with uh, Sokuja to complete on that, on that issue. It, it, another, another point I want to sure, raise sure, please, please, sure. is that he said uh, Togoland was called Transvolta Togoland. At independence. 
I think you said. Clarified ad independence. At independence? Yes. No. What happened was that Transwater to Golan was created by British ordinance only in 1952. Eh? That is five years before independence. And Transwater to Golan consisted of southern British to Golan and southeastern Gold Coast colony. Uh. Southeastern, southeastern Gold Coast colony comprised Anglo, Tong, Aveno, Peki areas. Uh. They were not part. That's correct. Yeah, they were not part of uh, British Togoland. Uh, Togoland. Yeah. That's so correct. Transota and uh, this Transota Togoland was redesignated uh, by the Volta Region Act of 1959 as Volta Region. So that is how we came to have Volta Region. Yeah, exactly. So in terms of area coverage, Transota Togoland is the same as the water region. So it's just a change of name, semantics. Yes. So the whole of British Togoland was not known as Transwater Togoland. Uh, you make that point no. quite categorically. Independent. You know? Yeah. yeah. So see. that is a mistake people have been making. People don't seem to know the difference between water region, Transwater Togoland, Western Togoland, British Togoland, and even the Gold Coast. Uh, Ghana. Recently, I asked one of the, our prominent people what was the colonial name for Ghana. He told me the Gold Coast. And I said, you are wrong. Say formerly Gold Coast. Actually, uh, by de facto, Ghana, the present Ghana, is made up of Gold Coast and the UN Trust Territory of Togolang. Uh, which is simply called British Togola. Which is a whole area that we've just described. Exactly. Now, now tell me, I, do I get a sense from what you're saying that for those who are pushing this agenda that has led to the violence and the maybe, maybe misconstruing or misunderstanding um, what is it that they themselves simply don't have an understanding of exactly what is it that you're fighting for? Well, is, it, is it a misplaced understanding, a misplaced aspiration? Uh, I think first maybe it's confusion in the mind of the people. In those, who are, those who are pushing this, including myself. We are look the issue. We are completely. When you say including yourself, what do you mean? Because as I'm saying, we don't seem to understand okay. what the problem is. Okay. What is the problem? <laughs> the problem is that eh, there was a plebiscite in 1956 as a result of the UN uh, visiting mission, we came to the two Togos, French Togo and British Togo in 1955. And then they recommended that there should be a plebiscite in British Togoland to determine their political uh, fate. Now, so the plebiscite was carried out and the majority of people, Togoland people, said they wanted a union with Ghana, with independent Gold Coast. OK, which then later became Ghana. Union, okay. not integration. What's the difference? The, let me tell you. The, uh, the UN visiting team recommended integration, that Togoland should be integrated with the Gold Coast. But the UN General Assembly rejected that and said it should be a union. Now, the union, from the point of view of the UN, is that there should be sovereign equality between the Gold Coast and Togoland. That there should be the two, country, the two uh, territories should be partners. There should be interdependence. You, you understand? So Whilst each remaining their own sovereign. sovereign. There should be sovereign equality. So for, 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 for instance, in America, we have about uh, more than 50 states, mm -hmm. they have some semi-autonomy and we have an umbrella government. True. I think the UN was thinking on that line, that Gokus will have his ad identity, uh, Togo will have his identity, but there should be a common government. But then, uh, 
resolution 1044, we brought about, we recognize the union, recommended the union. The same resolution 1044, UN resolution 1044, invited the British government, which was the administering authority, mm. to take such steps as necessary to bring about the union. Now, so if a trust territory being ruled by the UN and a, a, a colony being ruled by Briti uh, Britain are to come into a union, what do you do? You have to sit the two of them down for them to determine what type of government they will have, what should be their responsibility and obligation and benefit. Uh, such a thing did not happen. No meeting took place between the people of Gold Coast and Togoland, call it conference or meeting or mm. a seminar. But what happens is that uh, on the eve of uh, Gold Coast independence, around 4th March, the British government, with the help of the CPP government, just sent troops to Togoland and occupied the place on the pretext that they were quelling rebellion. So the invitation which the UN extended to the British to take such necessary steps, which of course will be constitutional and legal steps, never materialized. Never materialized. Rather, they forcibly integrated Togoland with the Gold Coast. So, so now, integration means Gokos, uh, the Togoland was losing its identity completely, and it was being consumed by Gokos. They didn't have any constitutional rights. So would you say that this current uh, manifestation of this um, struggle, is this a struggle for identity? Please, let, let, me, let me finish, then you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, because Britain refused to go the full length to implement Resolution 1044, there is no union on the so-called union between Ghana and, and uh, Togola. And all that most people are asking for is that, look, you've been with uh, the Goku since 1914. Uh -huh. You rectify the constitutional error and blunder with the British cause. And we go on as usual as brothers and sisters. But what has happened is that the successive governments of Ghana have not had the courage uh -huh. to listen to. They, they, they don't have the courage to listen to anything about Togoland. In fact, during Nkrumah's time, the mere mention of the word Togoland will let you... you let, let, let me ask, when, when, you say, when you say successive government have not had time to listen to, what are they going to listen to? What is it that they can do for the people? We are saying there's no union document on the so-called union between Ghana and Togoland. De facto, de facto, they are one uh, this thing, but legally, Ghana doesn't exist. So in, 20, so in 2020, I mean, because of what has happened, mm -hmm. but based on that history, uh, are you suggesting that they, and yesterday I had suggestions that an engagement should, should happen? Mm -hmm. That's what you're suggesting? Oh, but I mean, if somebody says he has a problem, be it constitutional or legal, or even cultural, and you are in a community together, and you say, I have a problem. You invite the person and at least listen to him. Look, I have appeared before the National Reconciliation Commission, 2002, and I presented the petition and drew the attention. The petition to do what exactly? What were you petitioning for? That there's, there's no union document on the, on the so-called so -called union. Let me ask therefore, you a question. Are, therefore, are, you, are you a secessionist? Why should I be a secessionist? It's just a clarity. That, I, that question is provocative. No, I'm asking me. I mean, just a clarity, because people are listening, so that we clarify that. I mean, so what exactly are you asking for in that I, petition? I'm saying that there is no union document on the so-called union, so it should be rectified, and we stay together as brothers and sisters. OK. What are you going to do with the secession? I'm saying that we have stayed together for since 1914. Mm -hmm. huh? So continue. So what are you what, what are you going to succeed okay. for? But because the reason why we have this is to find a solution. So we st we want us to stay together. Um, and and again, everybody who's listening who may be part of those who 
start of the violence on Friday. What you're saying is that we cannot break apart. No. We cannot use violence. No. We still need to um, remain together as one people, correct? I've been telling people that violence cannot yeah? solve the problem. Listen, violence, confrontation, repression, they are very powerful. But dialogue, negotiation, and engagement are far more powerful than violence. Okay. Because violence does not solve any problem. Dialogue does. It gives you a long-lasting solution to a problem. Now, please, listen to me. Mm. What I'm saying is that this thing, people think that it's a new thing. It's not a new thing. Yeah, the, I, I want you to hold yeah. on to that. I want you to hold no, on no, to no. that. I want to take a quick break. When I return, I'll hear from the Vice President of the Board of House. I'll come back to you and I'll also hear from uh, Mr. Kujia too. On the question of, so where do we go from here to find a solution? You say engage. But the outcome, what should be the end goal of that engagement, by the way? It's what I want you to define in clear terms for me when we return from the break. Okay. Stay with me. When we return, we'll get into that. Um, and then we'll speak to the Volta Regional House of Chiefs also and get the thoughts of um, Sam Okujito on this question of, so we know the history. What is it that from the history that we can do, we can take from that and use to fix the problem permanently? Stay with me. Also live on PM Express, it's live on Joy 99.7 FM, also live on the uh, Joy News channel. My guest uh, in the studio is uh, uh, Mr. Koshi Kedem, who is a former MP, uh, Hohoi South. Uh, also in tonight joining me is the uh, renowned private legal practitioner, is a member of the Council of State, um, Sam Okujito. Um, we also have uh, Togbe uh, Tepro Hodo, and I'll go to him now. Um, and and Togbe, uh, pardon me for staying on the line. I needed to clear the history and understand uh, really why we are where we are so I can bring you in. I mean, I wonder though, uh, Togbe, I know the Volta Regional House of Chiefs, you've uh, been attempting um, to try and and resolve this matter. You've asked for dialogue, you've asked for collaboration uh, with the government to try and fix this problem. I, I wonder, you've had a suggestion since yesterday that um, maybe an attempt to uh, engage is the best way forward. What's your own take on this? I mean, with, with you, you, are, you are in the Volta region, you are the House of Chiefs. What's, what's your thinking on the way to fix this problem? I think basically we have to start from the premise that what has happened or the events that happened over the weekend and uh, last night are all playing criminal acts. I think that's the premise from which we should start all, all the, the talk. Mm -hmm. And you see, as far as all of us are concerned, even if these people claim to have some case, I don't think that they are, they, are, they are bringing that case up in the proper way. We, we live in a civilized society, and I think that what people ought to do to articulate their grievances is to follow due process. The mere fact that they have resorted to these kinds of acts, which are criminal in nature, for some of us, makes it very difficult for anybody to even you know, throw any uh, sympathy at them. That, that, that is, that is the, the, the turning point of all these discussions. Because if you go on this kind of route, you cause bodily injury to people. Death has resulted. And as we have stated in our, in our first sequence, innocent people have even been arrested. I don't think this kind of thing all very well for any group of people who would want to be hurt in our kind of democratic dispensation. That is the point that the Volta Regional House of Peace has been trying to emphasize over all these years. And it appears to me that people just think that, like Mr. Samokutenzo has said, they, they see or hear about something happening elsewhere and they think that, oh, we can be replicated here. Mm. We don't want to go down that lane. We have lived in peace for how many years? God knows how many years after independence, 63. And then, 21st century, people think that it is by resort to such methods that they get their grievances addressed. I don't think so. So, let us all agree at a certain point that this whole act is, a crim is criminal in nature and it ought to be seen as that. That is my personal. So, 
so so this so for so for you this is a purely national security issue arrest prosecute and and yes. and and, and, yes. and that and that will resolve the problem that will not resolve the problem but okay. i think that's the first step because see sometimes when you 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 send out such a message loud and clear people will then be more measured in the way they approach this thing okay yes that is that is the, the, the way i look at it because if if you go on this kind of uh, uh, road w w what are you expecting anybody to do the law must, must take it cost first and foremost it is only when maybe a few people are punished that you serve as deterrent to other people not to go down that that lane and you see until we do we cannot begin to see the proper perspective of this whole thing we all are interested in having peace in this country and so if a group of people want to disturb the peace I think first and foremost, we need to address that issue. Thereafter, if there's anything to talk about, we can't. I mean, s stay with me. Let me bring back um, Sam Okujoto. Mr. Okujoto, so where do you stand on that question? Should we be treating this purely as a criminal matter? Or the, another approach may help? Knowing your, your, your having, just drawing from your, your historical knowledge, and listening to um, what um, your friend uh, Kosi Kedem had said also, what, what for you will be the way to at attack this? Well, because Kosi Kedem was a member of parliament. If there was any such issue that was agitating his mind, I thought that parliament would have been the right forum for him to have raised that issue for discussion. <laughs> I tried. Secondly, it's always important for, also for us to appreciate that we have chiefs who are our elders. Now, if there's a certain group of people felt that there was something wrong that was done before, I would have thought that the proper thing for them to do was to take this matter out with the chiefs mm. for discussion. Not that somebody is saying that the central government should come and negotiate. Negotiate with who? The chiefs are the ones who represent the people. We have House of Chiefs. Who has go, ever gone to the House of Chiefs to go and discuss issues of this nature? And then, of course, they keep talking about Western Togo, and this is why I was trying to draw your attention to the fact that in the place beside that was held, whether the mandate was right or wrong, the issue is that we have Mamprusis, we have Dagombas, we have Gonjas, we have Boemkrachi, then we have Pando and Ho. Now, the majority of the people, when Krati, Gonja, Dagoba, Mapusi, all voted in the plebiscite massively. Now, since when did any Gonja or any Mampusi or any Dagomba? ever come talk about secession. It's only a handful of areas who are making the noise. And again, just a reminder to Mr. Kedem to say that, indeed, at the time of the previous side, there was a group that was talking about a bloody, a bloody, a bloody. Now, Asia and the rest were part of that group. But what they were talking about was Every unification. No. Unless That's not right. confuse us. They were talking about every unification. No. They no. wanted the AVs in Ghana and in, in well, so called mandated Togo and the French Togo to join together. No. This was their agitation at the time. Of course, again forgetting that the AVs in Togo were also a minority just as much as the areas in the British Togoland were also a minority. And so what is then is the argument now? Those who are causing this agitation now, they are areas. They don't belong to the other tribes who are the majority in the, in the voter region. Mm. And so there, there's a, a, a whole host of lack of understanding in this whole matter. But I'm saying that if any of them have any problem, the proper forum for them to do is not central government. 
is the chief. It's for them to go to the chiefs, sit with them, and explain to them what their problem is. And let the chief take the matter up. Maybe maybe I should ask Togbe. Togbe, is the House of Chiefs ready to entertain um, anybody who may want to approach you mm -hmm. for a conversation on this? That's a good question. Well, that, that, is, that is a decision which I think that the generality of the House would have to take. Because, uh, you know, the, the, the difficulty here is, are they going to come up and say, identify themselves as, as, as which group? Yes. Those who have who yeah. perpetrated this act. And would, would it be proper for the whole House of Chiefs to deal with people who would have unleashed that violence? Or which other groups are we going to talk about? Maybe if we knew who the heads of those groups were, and they are not in any manner associated with, you know, these occurrences, probably then we, we could sit down with them. But uh, I, I would find it very difficult sitting down with people who have, who have, who have un unleashed me on, on, on the entire country, because this, this is something which is national in character. They are a national in character. And then, you know, tell them that, okay, now, now that you have said all these are okay, we cannot sit down and talk. I think that would be quite difficult, you know. But as like I said, this is something that would have to be decided by the right of the House, you know. Speaking for, 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 for myself as the Vice President, I don't think that I can take a concrete decision on that aspect of the matter. I mean, I'll come to Mr. Ken, I'm sure, but Mr. Could you talk? So, I mean, you have a situation where, as you've heard, they, for the House of Chiefs, this is a purely criminal matter. Crash it. Mm. I mean, uh, nip it in the bud. Crash it. But we know that this has been going on for a long time, um, and it's not going away. I mean, the security approach, as we've heard the history, um, it started right after independence, where they sent mm. um, you know, a men with, of course, officers into the area, territory, occupied, etc. That hasn't solved the problem. So it comes back to the question, understanding the history, what is the way to fix this permanently mm. if the security one hasn't really worked? Should we just treat them as criminals, look for them wherever they are, and prosecute them, and, and just forget it? Thank you. But will that solve the problem? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are criminals. I mean, that's, that's no disputing about that. What I'm saying is that if they were an identifiable group who has a grievance, and I'm saying that in that context, the proper procedure was done was to admit approach to the chiefs for which whatever chief they, they, build, they owe allegiance to. And raise the matter with the chief, for the chief to take it up with the House of Chiefs, and then you are making a progress. It's only the House of Chiefs that can discuss that matter with government, and not otherwise. Okay. Mm. Government cannot go and look for dissidents and criminals to say he's negotiating with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We cannot do that. Mm. Okay. Mm. Mm. If they do that, then they are even trying, they are citing the chiefs themselves. Mm. Because traditionally, we owe allegiance to who? Each of us owe allegiance to a chief. Whether you are an Asante or Dagomba or Mampusi or uh, uh, from Ho or Krachi, whatever you are, you owe an allegiance to a chief. Or if you are Anglo, Tommy Sri is there. We all owe allegiance to a chief. If there's any problem, then the proper forum is for us to sit down with the chief and discuss the matter with them, raise it up for them to take up. But I am telling you that these are pure criminal elements who have seen that something is happening elsewhere and somebody is funding them. And then they go around to do a thing of this nature. Yeah. Uh, you but then my another advice to the chiefs themselves is that sometimes they are talking about security agencies, security agencies, and I kept saying that. You can't talk about security agencies because you yourself in your own chieftaincy kingdom, your kingdom, you should have your own security people who will tell you who and who are agitating and creating confusion or trying to do something to destabilize the country. They all owe a duty to do that or even report. If they cannot solve it, mm. they can report the security agencies to arrest them. Um, Mr. Kujit, I'll come back to you and ask you a question about, so what should the government response be then? I mean, because it appears for me from all that you've said that this appears to be a very complex matter. There are people who probably may be copying, but they are drawing, I mean, from history, whether that history has been, has been um, corrupted or not, at least they believe that in that course. And by the way, these are the videos I saw, young men who had no, were not there in the plebiscite. They, somebody 
definitely higher up, older, must be feeding them something on which they may be operating. Mr. Kedder, let me bring you in. Mm. Um, let, let, you say that, and Mr. Kujito made the point that you were mm. in parliament. Yes. You had an opportunity <clears throat> to use that office to have your issues head and addressed. Yes. Did you do that? Well, that's why I'm telling you that nobody is prepared to listen to this problem. Okay. In parliament, I was noted for making statements. <laughs> in fact, by the time I left, I made about 52 statements, private statements on the floor. And this is one of the issues I wanted to talk about. Let's but, go to it. Well, what is it that you've done? No. First, if you want to make a statement in Parliament, you have to apply to the Speaker. Mm. If he agrees, you make the statement. If he doesn't agree, that's the end. Mm. So I made that attempt. I didn't succeed. But I appeared before the National Reconciliation Commission. Mm -hmm. I sent a petition to them, drew their attention to the problem, and asked them to, see, to investigate it and see what they could do. In their report, they said that the issue I have raised was not in their mandate. So they didn't handle it. Again, I waited until 2010, 11, at the Constitution Review Commission. I sent another petition there. Uh, as for them, they, they look at it somehow. But again, they said, OK, I might have a point, but Again, it was not under their, because under their jurisdiction, because they are working with the Constitution. They cannot set the Constitution aside and look at my case. You see? Then I said, oh, this parliament doesn't want to look at it. National Reconciliation Commission doesn't want to look at it. Constitution Review Commission doesn't want to. So what do I do? So I have to contact prominent individuals in Ghana to write to them. I wrote, I, I don't want to, because I don't have their permission, so I won't mention their name. Uh -huh. You all say that they don't have the jurisdiction to look at the matter. You see? So if nobody wants to listen to the matter, and somebody says it has a problem, you don't want to listen to it, what do we do? About the chiefs. But you hear the voice of Regional House of Chiefs say. That, that's what I'm they saying. They represent the people. That's and what they I'm saying. This is a pure criminal matter. Listen. Why, can't, why should we when, when talk, they, to, when, talk, when, talk, talk to criminals? No. When, when did it become a criminal matter? When they decided to attack no. the police station. Yeah. Just, that, people that, hostage. That, that's just recently. Yeah. That one could be a criminal matter. It but, is a criminal matter. It's not code. It, it is a criminal matter. Listen. Because do you know the people who are doing the thing? Me, I don't know. Well, they claim to be it's a um, conjecture. representing groups you of see, people and the hoist of flags. I mean, the no, Steady Group Foundation, let, the Western Togo. Let, let me just make the, about, the, about the chiefs. Uh, Togbe Hodo is one of the chiefs I respect yeah. so much. Uh, you know he's a lawyer? Well, you're telling me. Yeah, he's a prominent lawyer. And he's a very principled person. So personally, I have a lot of respect for him. But as I approach... The NRC and the CRC, and do you want to listen? I approved the National, uh, Regional House of Chief. Okay. I wrote five good letters. They didn't mind me. What were you asking for in those letters? What were you asking? They said that they should look, they should investigate. They should investigate the problem, this Togoland question. They should investigate it because I know they have a research department. They should investigate what, what it. What will be the point of the investigation? Okay, so that then, then they'll know that what people are saying is true or false. Then they'll determine what to do about the case. Okay. I wrote to them five good letters. They didn't mind me. It was uh, recently, about uh, nine months ago, that they invited me to the house. Uh, they said I should come there at uh, 8 o'clock. I was there at 7.30 a.m. And you know what happened? I stay outside, nobody gave me a seat. Until I went to the registrar and told her, ah, you have invited me to come, and you left me outside. It was only then that he asked me to come and sit. Mm. And I sat there until the close. 
huh? from the session they were they were holding and uh, they didn't even allow me to address them but besides should meet the committee and when i met the committee uh, they said they were not prepared to, to to entertain what i was saying i said oh this issue i'm asking you to investigate it and see whether what i've written is it true or not they said no, no, no they're not going to investigate so it is not for lack of uh, attempts. Attempts have been made, but nobody wants to listen to it. But nobody. isn't isn't it possible because you don't have a case? No. I mean, if well, all these how, how institutions, you, if, if you listen from Parliament, no, how, you have been Parliament for a long time. Yeah. Parliament won't listen. We can't do anything about it. Um, Commission on uh, Human Rights and mm -hmm. Justice. Um, the um, the commission that looked into the uh, issues in the past, Reconciliation Commission. The, not, the original House of Chiefs, everybody says, mm. it, it, it don't seem to that you have, they, they you, don't, don't, you really don't have a case, don't you? Then, then how do you know whether I, I have a case or not if you don't listen to what I'm saying? You have to listen to what I'm saying for you to determine whether I have a case or not. You see? Mm. So this intransigence, this strong-headedness, this, excuse me, say, arrogance on part of powers that be. In fact, even what is happening now, I'm not happy about it. Because the way the political parties are handling the issue is not the best. It's one of, one of the reasons I, I, I really it, discourage. Because this, this, is a time, this is a time for cool heads to prevail. And then, as... Uh, Both parties have condemned oh, it, by the way. No, they should do more than that. They do. should come together and look at what is happening. Okay. Yeah, you see, they are trying to score political points. With, off with, the back of this. With, with the case, which is wrong. You see? So I'm not pleased with how the political parties are handling the case. Okay, so let's go, let's go to the fundamental question we are trying to answer tonight. So you agree, though, that for those who did the, the perpetrated violence about the Friday, yesterday, etc., treat them as criminals, pure criminals. Why not? Okay. Now, if you deal with that, if you say engage with those who are legitimately have concerns yeah. over the issues of the territory, the territorial issues, but who will represent them? Must, there must be there must be a face to this to, to this, okay? A face that has legitimacy because hasn't picked up, um, hasn't resorted to violence, but simply wants to talk and engage and at least be heard. Who will represent? Them? Who will be the face? Well, at least I know that I'm doing something about the case. Okay, so nobody, nobody has called to talk to me. You will represent them? I represent myself. Okay. Nobody, nobody has called to talk to me. Okay. So maybe there are some other groups. Yeah. You know, I cannot tell. But maybe there are some other groups. Do they have a case? Are they trying to contact the people and they don't want to listen to them? You know, things like that. But I can only talk for myself. Because me, I don't believe in violence. One, I don't believe in secession because I don't know how will you gain from it because, as I've said, we've been with the Gold Coast since 1914. If you don't so, mind summarizing for me, assuming government agrees to take that approach, okay, deal with the criminals, but now engage with yourself and others like-minded in trying to find a lasting solution to this, what outcome are you are you looking for? What what will be what will be an outcome that will address your concerns? If you can sum it up for me, because I really want to put my finger on it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That uh, resolution ten four four should be implemented to the fullest. What is the resolution ten four point summary? Resolution ten four four did not approve, but they express approval for a union. You see, there's a difference between approve and to express approval for something. You see, so the express approval... I'm not sure I follow. In yeah, simple let, terms... Let, let, let me finish. The express approval for a union, mm -hmm. which means that the result of the publicity alone were not enough to constitute a union. So, in addition to the expression of uh, approval, they invited the British to take such necessary steps 
to bring about the union. Well, th there's a document that has been sent that, um, f uh, for those who believe in it, resolves this question completely about the outstanding nature of the plebiscite, for example, as you particularly. This, this document resolves that question about the Togolan Union and, and the integration into Ghana. Yeah. And this is the document T1301, a letter dated 6 March 1957 from the Minister of State Foreign Affairs in the United Kingdom, Government to the Secretary General, New York, 6 March 1957. And I want to read. It's signed by Alan Noble, Minister of State for Foreign Affairs in the United Kingdom Government. In accordance with Operative Paragraph 3 of the General Assembly Resolution 1040 X1 of the 13th December 1956, I have the honor to inform Your Excellency, on behalf of Her Majesty's Government in the United Kingdom, that with effect from midnight, uh, 5th Sith March, 1957, under the terms of the Ghana Independence Act, the territories previously comprised, comprised in the Gold Coast became the independent state of Ghana mm. under the same act. Yeah. The union of the former trust territory of Togoland and the British administration with the independent state of Ghana, um, uh, with the independent state of Ghana, took place with effect from the same time and date. So there is an act which was written to the to the UN. The UN and it, it was a letter notification. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of it the, was part of act. it was part of resolution ten four four that when the union was established, they should notify. Yes. The Secretary but, General. But substantive, there was a legal document bringing all these territories, including the territory, the trust territory of Togola, mm -hmm. under this union that we all love called Ghana. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that settle it? Look, do you understand what you say? Look at it properly. Look, they are saying that the independence of Ghana eh, with the previous territories. That's independent state of Ghana. Mm. Under the same article, they were the union between former UN Trust Territory and Ghana. Mm -hmm. The independent state of Ghana. Which means that this letter, here's a letter. Mm -hmm. This letter has distinguished between the territory of Ghana and the UN Trust Territory of Ghana. Yeah, but it says no, that. No, no, listen, listen. But, but that act, it says the act, under the act. No, the, the territories, the, the territories, act. yeah, under the act, the territories became became part of the independent state of Ghana. That's what I'm saying. That's the independence act. Yeah. The independence act was not a union document. And it didn't mention anything about the antecedents eh, of the plebiscite or religion 1044 or even the UN Trust Territory of Togoland. Look, the, the, this, this is it. The, 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 the Independence Act of Ghana was just a routine parliamentary uh, legislation to allow the Gold Coast, which was a colony. Yeah, I'm surprised you call it routine. I mean, it's, it's, an, yeah, act, it's, an, act of, it's an act of parliament but it, on the back of the plebiscite. No, in those days, before any colony or dominion, of Britain became independent, they have to pass this particular out to allow them to become independent. Mm. So that's what I'm saying, it was routine, mm. you know. So it was a routine, this thing, but it didn't mention anything about the union of Ghana. And you, you, you look at yeah. it. Okay. It didn't. But, so but, but this I, one, this one, this uh, independence has, has nothing to do with the union. Okay. Between so Ghana fundamentally, you say the way out is Let's talk. Let's try and, and hear your concerns. I want to bring in, thankfully, the information minister who is joining us um, via, via telephone tonight as we begin to, to get a government uh, sense of this. Um, Mr. Pong Krumah, so, I mean, there is a criminal aspect of this, and the, the Volta Regional House of Chiefs has been categorical tonight in stating that deal with the criminal aspect, treat the, those who were involved purely as, a criminal, as criminals. But then there is also the long-term solutions that government needs to explore. Some have suggested, including Mr. Kedem and Co. Yesterday, we had, um, you know, the security experts, Mr. Bombardi and others also suggest that um, beyond that, we need to consider a lasting solution that may involve dialogue. Um, what's government's take on this? Is this, is this being considered at all? The, the, the Water Regional House of Chiefs 
I extended well, a hand to evening. collaborate also. Um, sorry, I've not had the opportunity to follow your program because yeah. we've just been in a meeting of uh, the Ghana Journalist Association with editors, etc., mm. giving some background briefs and some thoughts on uh, these developments. Uh, the National Security Minister, the Defence Minister, and myself meeting the DJ and senior editors from across the country. So I haven't followed that conversation. Mm. But if I understand your question to be, what is government intended approach? Is it dialogue or yes. law enforcement? Yes, or everything uh, The else. answer is simple. From uh, Friday uh, through to Sunday, we've been making the point that it is a multifaceted approach. There are people who genuinely don't understand what is going on. They've just heard somebody say that there's some plebiscite that was time-bound and they can ask for secession from Ghana or something, and they may have joined that train not knowing what it was or even its consequences. You can educate such people to understand. There are people who have difficulties in some particular aspect and may want to add that to it and um, get, get involved in an enterprise. You can teach them, educate them, engage with the local authorities, and they can also engage with them, and you can bring a, a resolution. And then there's the person who picks up a gun and shoots a police officer or a person who attacks a police station. That's a criminal act that must be dealt with as a criminal act. And so it's a multifaceted approach where you continue to um, enforce the law, protect the, the population, and also educate those who must be educated. It is not a single bullet for the entire enterprise. Um, so uh, w w we've seen the uh, criminal aspects already in play do you have do you have a timeline as to when this broader engagement and the other approaches will will be in full it will be in full swing i think earlier this week there was an attempt to have a meeting with some of the traditional councils or in lieu of that the entire regional house of chiefs uh, the timing was a bit short and what the government um through the minister for uh, chieftaincy did was to request for an alternate meeting later this week uh, I think that kickstarts the engagement. Already we're excited that the B Paramountcy, the Alavano Paramountcy, the Anglo Paramountcy have all come out very responsibly to denounce the act, call on their citizens not to be involved in this kind of enterprise. And the engagement would seek to ensure that all persons across the political divide, the traditional rulers, religious leaders, all participate in this exercise to A, ensure that the truth is told to people, B, ensure that um, the kind of education that is required to also denounce these acts and not be part of it um, is also put out there. And C, also ensure that criminal elements conspiring and attempting criminality are also made available to the state security agencies uh, so that we win together. It is together that we win. Pointing fingers and trying to, uh, you know, pitch tents on different sides doesn't bring a win to the Republic of Ghana. And uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, another question that had come up tonight. Is government prepared to, beyond the chiefs, etc., engage in non-criminal elements um, who believe in in the in the course as has been expressed uh, about the about the Western Togoland and and may need a hearing at I least to understand that already. Yeah, that for somebody who does not uh, have a clear understanding of what is going on, or somebody who even believes it, and 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 I think on Friday or so on one of your shows, yeah after um, Winston Amor had done a lengthy expose on the historical antecedents. I think there was a caller who called in and said, I never knew this. If I knew this, I'll never be part of this mm. um, enterprise. Mm. We have an opportunity to do all of that education and engagement. And it is part, like I said, of what we uh, uh, intend to do and actually have started doing, working with the traditional rulers, with the opinion leaders, uh, etc. But that must be distinguished from the criminal element which will be dealt with in accordance with law. Okay. Uh, Mr. Pongkuma, stay with me. I thankfully, have Sam Okujoto with me. He's a member of the Council of State. Um, Mr. Mr. Okujoto, speak to me now as a member of the Council of State. With the influence that you have, moral suasion, um, what can your input be? And what do you make of government's approach? What should the government approach be? Well, I've said it already. I said, excuse people. Mm. If the people have any problem, they are supposed to be the chiefs. It's not a question of making an agitation and talking about government. We want dialogue. But they are not prepared to because a because... government that will go to go and make dialogue with criminals is it's a putting itself into jeopardy. So we have chiefs, and I kept repeating that 
I have never heard any chief from any part of the Volta region or the so-called Western Togoland ever saying that they were unhappy with the Union, with the Gold Coast when they became independent. Because when they're talking about Union with Ghana, that's a misnomer. There was no such thing as Ghana. It was Gold Coast. Mm. And it was the Gold Coast and Western Togoland on the British mandate that became Ghana. And also, sometimes just a reminder to people that indeed there was a colony of the Gold Coast. There was Asante. And then there was the Northern Territories. And then there was the British mandated Togoland. All of them together became independent in 1957 and became Ghana. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't understand it from that point of view, uh, Mr. Pong is on the line and now, so let's just get this matter. What I kept repeating is that we are not teaching history any longer in the schools the way it should be taught. And this is part of the level of ignorance where people are being led to, to criminal conduct and action because they don't even understand the history of the country that we occupy now called Ghana. Mm. So we should reintroduce compulsorily the study of history in our schools from primary all the way up. I think the more you understand the history, the more you begin to understand. Because I was telling you earlier on that, the perception that uh, the ninth region, Channel 9, was <laughs> every All arose from this kind of confusion. Hmm. That when people did not understand that the mandated Togoland included what? All the way from the north. Yeah. Including so many tribes, as I said, the Agumbas, Kokumba, Mamprusi, and then of course Krachis. Yeah. And when you come to the northern, the Hawkway area there, that even becomes more confusing. Mm. Because when you begin to see the various tribes which are there, which are not the base, yeah. like uh, the Boris, Lugbas. the Akpa, the Santro Kofis, the Nkonyas, uh, the Likpes. Mm. These are not areas. No. They are not. And all these are included yeah. in the area. So yeah. you can't find a handful of areas coming from somewhere and then go and agitate. People say, go and negotiate with them. I think it's a complete mis misnomer. We yeah. have to teach our people history okay. for them to understand it. Let me ask you, does the Council of State have any role to play uh, in this attempt by government to resolve this permanently going forward? And what could that be? Well, you know, we were on break before this thing arose. I wrote to them. Yes. The so we will start. In fact, I understand that Mr. Kaden has written a letter. Yeah. That actually comes under my committee. Okay. So as soon as we start in October, we'll call him. Okay. Okay. I'm now, grateful. I'm briefly yeah, to that because no, no, I just have no. a few minutes when J just uh, to that. He says he says the council of state will call you. I mean, that's what that, you've been asking for to be to be to that, be heard. That would be fantastic. Now, I, I just want to briefly talk, uh, the the minister, minister. Yeah, I was talking about time time bound. Uh, this is, there was nothing like that. People are saying that after fifty years, you see the. So those who say that they misunderstand it completely because I'm saying that there's no document or deal eh, mm. on the union. Okay. So it means that there are no terms and conditions. Mm. So where did they get the information from mm. that after 50 years eh, mm. there should be a review? He was simply articulating the view that some have expressed. Yeah, I said those, did, who, those who express that you say that is based on ignorance. That's not that's not what it is. Where did they get it from? Okay. Because there's no document on the union. Okay. It is the document which will bring out this sort of thing. Mm. You know. Then uh, uh, about education. Yeah. That is that, that that is key. Very important. So you endorse government's approach to educating people. Very. You see, that's what we've been asking them to do all along. Because even the people who were talking about Western Togoland, and they are claiming that the Anglo tongue pity is in, they need to be educated on the issue. Mm. You, you understand? It is because they are not educated on this issue. That's why they are extending the area of dispute to include those areas. Mm. You know? And then one thing Finally. about one thing uh, uh, excuse sure. me, one thing about our chiefs is that our chiefs are very cautious about these issues. 
because of what happened in 1957 when the place was attacked mm. and what happened to them. And then during a, a champion time, a mm. lot of chiefs were uh, 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 arrested and yeah. put to court. So they are very, very cautious about it, these um, issues. Mr. Ken, I'm grateful that you joined me. Let me give a final thought to Togbe uh, Hodo. Togbe Hodo, so um, government says you're ready to engage. Um, let me hear your final thoughts on this. I mean, it looks like we are entering into a new phase of this where conversations yes, uh, will be had. Thank you so much. Uh, I think that in addition to all of this, uh, whilst we are advocating that people should be, you know, uh, brought before, you know, brought the book for their act, I think also that we, in our statement, emphasize the fact that people of the Volta region ought to be considered as equal partners in governance. Okay. And I think that if the, the, the national case is so distributed that each and everyone in this country gets the fair share, I think some of these incidents may, may be minimized. I, mm -hmm. I'm not saying to be completely eliminated because there will always be the criminal element, but it will be reduced to the very minimum. When, you know, the average man has food on his table, you know, so... For me, I would appeal to the government to intensify its, its drive to improve the lot of the, the, the average Ghanaian. Probably, you know, if some of these people, you know, to look at their background, I'm not, I'm not saying that's the case, but it probably are people who may, may not even know where the next meal is going to come. Yeah, susceptible and to being so exploited. It would be very easy for anybody to just give them a few if they go and lose it, I am not saying that's the case, but I'm just speculating. Yeah. So that is just my appeal. Let us all work together for better guns so that the average person would find his seat in this system. And I think all of this is minimal. Okay. Um, I'm grateful, Togbe Hodo. Uh, thank you very much, Sam Okujeto. Um, for joining us with the great insights. Uh, thank you, uh, Kojo Ponkruma, uh, for also giving us a sense of where government is going next with the engagement to try and fix this problem. Mr. Kedem, I'm grateful yeah. uh, for your time, but just run out of time just, on just, this. Just, I, this is a conversation that we'll have again. I'm sure that now you've said there'll be you've just, just one. Unfortunately, just one out of time. That's Mr. Kedem for you. Um, up <laughs> next will be sports, and um, uh, we've been live on Joy 99.7. If I'm going to join this channel, join us again tomorrow. We have the PM Express Manifesto Tracker on health we have the deputy health minister um dr koboy uh coming up against dr omani Bama uh to debate the issues uh on the health sector for both parties in the manifesto and we'll have also uh, dr abeka and kruma join us with some great analysis as we break the party's manifestos down stay with me tomorrow my name is evan spencer